And this is the Cylon eye itself, which is, of course, a critical part of the project. And like many of my web projects, I have a web page dedicated to the construction of this. So I encourage you to go to the website, go to the web page, and you'll find all kinds of extra information. You'll find drawings, some things you can download, and so on, uh, parts list, that type of thing. And uh, maybe some more information on some options. But right now, we're going to build the Silent Eye. And this is a brand new light strip. And I got this actually from the RV manufacturer. And as you've seen in the RV, this is already discolored after only a year. And they're hard to find. This is around $45. And I found these for about $7. Same thing, except they're black. And I think they won't have a problem with the UV like this one did. Now, the only difference is... This one is just a little bit shorter. If you look at this end, the screw holes actually aren't going to be the same. However, this is wide enough that it's going to cover up the screw holes. So I feel really confident in using this one. And so on the back, I was able to pull the strip off. And this is what we have on the inside. This is just a strip of LEDs. And it's in one circuit board and it's a fairly flexible circuit board. And I was able to find the thin circuit board like that from OSH Park, where I buy all my circuit boards. But you may notice, this is a single strip, or this is three strips. And since the minimum order from OSH Park is three circuit boards, solder the three together, so we'll have the equivalent strip at one-third the price. Because this was $13 for the three. And if I would have bought three of them this size, it would have been $39. So this is just a cost-conscious move. In fact, what happens is they'll just fit in here like this. And then the next one will fit. And so on. You'll have a seam, but then I can put some silicone sealant or something around here. Probably some 5200. And it'll be cheaper. The one issue that you're going to have, and there's no way around it, this has to use surface mount technology and the reason for that is I can't get a standard LED in here in this hole in the space that we have allocated so you're going to have to learn a little bit of SMD soldering and that's what these are these are SMD and so for example we have 10 LEDs here and they go in these little square areas so I've selected the largest components that I could, including uh, some resistors and a set of capacitors. So if you have you know, basic soldering skills, you should be able to do this. Now you'll see that I have the traces here and here. And what you're going to want to do is put a wire here, here, and here. And it actually solders the boards together. So the boards are connected together between each one from these. Now the other thing I found is this is not an exact um, dimension and you may have to end up trimming this a little bit to get this board to fit and to get all the LEDs in the right orientation in here. And what makes this project possible is this LED. Now this is a surface mount LED. It's a red, green, blue, white and it is equivalent to a 50-50 but the difference is this is addressable so what that means is through software we can select an individual LED and make it do something make it turn on off whatever the color is now that's different from the standard LEDs where you turn the whole strip on or off these LEDs you can turn each individual LED on and off and that's what makes possible the silly sequences that you see in this video now, the limitation to these are, I can only find these in 5 volts. I've never seen one in anything but 5 volts. So we have to have a 5 volt power supply. Well, I bought these LEDs from a company called Adafruit.com, and they call them NeoPixels. Uh, I bought RGBW version, and I bought two different kinds, actually. This one is product number 2757, and in some of the videos you'll see where this has actually got a black case but they're the same thing so 
just wherever you find them cheapest. Uh, you can get them usually from Mauser or DigiKey as well. Uh, you can go up to the Adafruit website and look up the specs. And you can just barely see it, but you have a little white tip right there. That's the orientation, and it will go somewhere like that. So what I found, the easy thing to do is to just tin one of the pads very lightly. What we want to do is just kind of tack it. So we've tacked it, right, and then I'm just going to do the other three corners. And it also depends on what equipment you've got. And there actually is one more technique that I can show you when you're dealing with these SMD devices. And that is a roll of tape I have here, and it's called Kapton Tape. And it is a high temperature tape, so the soldering iron won't melt it. And you can pick up the part and set the part in here like so. And this is just temporary, just long enough to solder this. Like that. That's another way that you can uh, help line these parts is with a little bit of tape like this. And I highly recommend that for beginners. And now we've got the board assembled. All three pieces are soldered together. And you'll notice that the pads on the end, on both ends, are not used. And some of these pads along the middle are not used. And you have to refer to the drawing uh, to know which one goes to which. And then to finalize the Cylon Eye, I've applied some Boat Life Marine Sealant to the back side of it. And this waterproofs everything. Keeps the grommet from pulling out. So... That's what the thing looks like when it's done.